What is up, creators? Welcome, man. Super excited to be with Nathan R. Bradford today. He is a gifted composer, been composing since high school. He is a dedicated, devoted father. Uh, he and his wife are delightful. He's well studied in music, a couple of music, uh, university music programs he's been involved in, and a really expansive catalog in different genres. Super excited to have you on today, Nathan. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, hundred percent. So you've been composing a while and then you had this idea that was to do like this massive project detailing the life of Jesus. Yeah. What inspired you to take on a project like so big and so significant? <clears throat> well, it began with my journey. Um, I grew up watching Touched by an Angel with Roma Downey, Della Reese and John Dye. And then in 2013, I was doing summer sales and I was walking around Target to get a drink and just to check out the electronic section. I came across this and it was the Bible mm. series. This is Roma Downey and found out she and her husband, Mark Burnett, produced this whole 10 hour mini series that was just incredible, which later became this movie called Son of God. They took the same footage and they put it into a movie and released it to theaters on the big screen. Yes. And she has just over and over just done work after work after work to glorify God. And I felt very inspired by wanting to do something similar myself. And it just so happens that <clears throat> an LDS artist named Kenneth Cope did um, a musical that took him 24 years Um that has the pictures and everything and the lyrics of all the acts of each song. Oh, wow. And I thought it was cool that he was working on a musical about Jesus. And then we have all this stuff about Jesus with Roma Downey coming out. And um, it's called Son of Man, the musical. Oh, this is um, the and then Cope. by Kenneth Cope. Yeah. And the other thing was uh, Mark Mayberry had the, the reflections of Christ photography with the album that I listened to in 2000. 10 through 10 2012 so just a combination of all these things and then mel gibson's passion of the christ was a big moving project for me to um, experience as well and i love the soundtrack so just all of these combinations of things drove me to want to do something like this and the major thing was i decided in 2012 that my favorite holiday was going to be easter because i was on my mission at the time talking about the savior all the time and just the Easter weather, the flowers, the the energy, the beauty, the newness of life, and just how hopeful and bright the time of year feels. And I just thought I would love to combine my love for Easter as my favorite holiday and also combine it with the work that I've seen others do that I want to do myself. That's beautiful. I know the blossom just started popping here in Nashville. Um, there's been lots of cherry blossoms and there's a, a royal magnolia bush that's like by the gym that I go to that's like full bloom right now. And it's like, yeah, I know exactly what you mean by like, there's this energy that comes with Easter, like restart, like long, cold, dead winter is now ending. And like, what a beautiful time of year to to celebrate Jesus and everything about his life that brings these, you know, rebirths and restarts. And that's been a super relevant theme for me too. you know, loving the idea that however dark it's been, like, the sun will come up again. Yeah. And, you know, that's brought a lot of hope to me. And I love, as I've, you know, had a sneak peek to the album here, dude, the depth that you went to over and over and over again, like the, it's not just like, okay, I made a couple of songs. Like how many tracks are there? 29. 20, like this is like a serious work of art. <laughs> <laughs> expansive it's developed there you know we could talk a, a, you know lots of music terms i don't want to like super nerd out people um <laughs> the melodies are lush the <laughs> harmonies are varied like you do a lot of different things with harmonic rhythm like it's very thematic 
there's a lot of awesome there that very much represents like what Easter is for me. And I'm excited, you know, Facebook listeners, like if you get a chance, one friend, Nathan, like immediately, so you can get all the latest, like when things are dropping. Uh, and two, just like stay close because there are so many, you know, like follow him definitely. Cause the music is so meaningful and, you know, Nathan, as you and I have had a chance to talk over the last couple of months, like there's a depth to your personality. Like you care at such a deep level. You care about your kid so much. You care about your wife so much. Like your relationship with Jesus is not just like the surface level thing. Like I feel this conviction from you and like it comes across in your music in a way that it's, it's hard to put words to like super appreciate. Like I can't begin to fathom like how many hours. Cause you've talked about like, right. Like this started in 2012. Like, well, you mean project, the, right? Like the idea that I loved Easter this much kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then like so many hours and there's so many details that go into this composition that, you know, I'm really excited for everybody to hear it. Thank Nathan, you. Who would you say this album is meant for? Um, It's for an audience that does really well with using their imagination. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we... I've noticed myself that when I listen to a soundtrack, the experience is not the same as watching the movie and noticing the soundtrack along sure. the way. So when you don't have the overshadowing, overbearing noises and the details covering it all up, it's I want the audience to be able to listen to the music and then hopefully it moves them to want to read the accounts and then take the accounts into their imagination while they're listening. And it can be a, a movie list experience but it's like a soundtrack to a movie that's what it was for me like it was like oh so there's it's purely instrumental so no lyrics correct except for three the last three songs that's right yeah. I have mm -hmm. a majority of them are <laughs> purely instrumental it was amazing for me because i have some pretty vivid imagery that comes up when i listen to music and you know there's like the title of the track that is a specific <laughs> phrase from the new testament and then like it really does set the table to go on this musical journey that was really emotive for me. Um, so I love, you know, you're saying, who's it for? It's like anybody that reads the New Testament, anybody who's yeah. interested in Jesus, anybody who's interested in hope, anybody who is looking for uplifting media. I think inspired. we are hungry for hope at this time because we're seeing the chosen take off with Dallas Jenkins and Jonathan Rumi. So that's showing that the world's wanting it. That this is a good time to talk about Jesus, especially and during Easter and while the chosen's happening too. And so <laughs> brilliant. And that yeah, that shows meant a lot to me. And there's a lot that happens musically and a lot that happens visually and to see a compassionate Jesus is like a different side. You know, I was omnipotent. Jesus is like, yeah, I'm all in on omnipotent Jesus. And that's part of, you know, you mentioned Mark Mabry and it's like, that's so much of what I love about his art is it's a very human side of him. Joseph Bricky has some prints that are also very similar where it's like, Oh, that's like a, that's like a dude that I know from the grocery store. That's like a dude that I know from the YMCA that's a dude that I you know what I mean it's like this is a relatable human being which is such a you know an important pillar of like my own experience with Jesus that he is both yeah and I love that you hit on that and that's some of the influence um you know for the music I was curious for you it's not easy to make art I mean it is for some people <laughs> it just kind of happens like we can't not right produce art Mm -hmm. but like with something so personal to you how do you hope people use this what um, do you hope to get out of it I hope that it can be something that doesn't just get the focus for maybe this year and then it gets faded away but people mm -hmm. could bring it back year after year Easter after Easter or even for other times of the year and anytime they're reading the New Testament or reading about the life of the Savior, it would be a great resource for people to pull it out again and again and to use it. And I think, in my opinion, when you have something that's cinematic or something that's theatrical, it kind of 
welds into your mind even stronger than if you just had a silent room and you were just reading the text with nothing. I 100%. feel like it's kind of like, because I saw this clip in the theater, this story now comes to life and I just feel it so deep now. So it's kind of like that with the music, like, wow, this scene had such depth to it that now I can go back and read this account and I can hear it now and it makes it more meaningful. Mm. So, <laughs> which is wild, right? Cause we do that with music. Like if I hear, you know, certain songs, it's like, I'm right back in the eighth grade dance hall and I can smell the smells of sweaty boys and I can feel, you know, the clammy hands of like, oh my gosh, it's a woman. And is she going to want to dance with me? And she's real cute. And like all the feelings. Right. And I see the colors of the lighting and the decor. And it's like, these are all embedded in the songs. It's an incredibly powerful emotion tool yeah i was curious for you to hear a little bit about your process too i know each artists blow me away both <laughs> visual artists and composers because it's like i can dink around and like make little ukulele songs you know or i'm i'm great at learning you know wonder wall or whatever else you know the weezer blue album on my guitar and i can go sing that but like for you to produce it, for you to like innovate it and then bring it to life and then refine it. Can you like pull back the curtain a little bit and walk us through some of your creative process? Like how does a work like this come about? What keeps you engaged with something that requires so much time and energy? For me, it starts with the feeling of, can I do this? And then giving it a try and then seeing some success spark. And then it gives you that confidence to do a second one and a third and a fourth. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like this beautiful thing that just starts growing and things surprise you as you just go along this effort of just, I'm just going to see what I can do with the best I can. And I took a lot of, um, <clears throat> I don't want to spend too much time talking about some background preface, but Something that I'm very grateful for is my parents had me watching The Wizard of Oz, Sound of Music, King and mm -hmm. I, and movies that, and Snow White and different movies like that, that really shaped my musical ear at an early age. I remember listening to the scenes in Snow White when the witch was being transformed or when the dwarves were chasing her off of a cliff. I just remember the, the strings and how the patterns went. And I could hear like, dun, 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 like you can hear in your head, or at least I could hear all the, the soundtrack while I was visualizing as a kid, what was happening with each accent and dynamical, like, um, emphasis or something that cued specific moments. And I loved when characters would run and you'd hear like the violins, like, or something. And then, and then representing the motion like you'd hear the rest and then that means they stopped running things like that. And so I think that when I started investigating into the nineties films with Alan Menken's work, which was little mermaid all the way up until like Hercules and then he detangled and stuff like that. But I think hearing how he took very well known themes of music and he put them as staples throughout the movie, changed them into minor sequences or major based off of if the movie's having a sad moment or a happy moment and I used to pay attention and say oh my gosh like this you can hear poor unfortunate souls in here or you can hear like you can hear the theme of um like one last hope from Hercules like in the market when they're going through the city like so it's woven throughout yeah and so that's what was really inspiring to me is not very many composers take movie themes and thread them throughout their film it's usually like they take like a main theme of the movie and then just kind of put layers and layers and it's just random beautiful melodies but they're not like tied to the singing or the musical parts of the movie um so that's something that was super important for me is i started the project saying i started my day each day working on the project with prayer and mm -hmm. I was searching for songs and tunes. And then I would always end with gratitude with prayer. And my hope was that this could be like the best I could ever make it. So I came up with three tunes 
set them aside and then paid attention to all the the moments in the scriptures and thought like which um moment needs what theme so um like he lived to love me is the crucifixion theme so of course whenever it has any reference to that then that's playing and what's kind of surprising to me is these themes suddenly just start fitting like they just naturally belong in these spots of the of the work like i never thought of um like the last supper being like so fitting for he lived to love me or mary at the tomb is so fitting for the um come to him theme that juliana sings my wife and just different themes like that or the theme of when peter's gazing out and noticing the savior you start hearing the song peter's song and just these themes just really really belong in these spots and you wouldn't have it any other way like it just starts to morph into these moments like it belonged there the whole time kind of feeling <laughs> so good i just got chills as you're speaking because i was thinking about i mean like it makes <clears throat> it's like you said like i can read the book but to think about these people as people you know, mm -hmm. Peter makes like a pretty drastic career change. Yeah. <laughs> Gets a new name, right? Like <laughs> gives up his lifelong business to like do a ministry, right? Like it's, it's one thing to read about. It's another thing to think about like, yeah, if Peter had a song, what would it sound like? And dude, like, I love the <laughs> way you represented it. And I'm so excited for more people to be able to listen to this, interact with this, share this with their family and have deeply meaningful high quality music to <laughs> bring this to life thank you um something that i wanted to quickly just as an influence i wanted to add into this is when i was thinking about the savior standing on the beach and the shore and mm. you just witness the sounds of the water washing in and peter's never heard of this man or met him but he just feels this this feeling like there's something different about him and he wants to go talk to him and he wants to understand him. And he wonders like if there's going to be a different future by meeting him or something. So the lyrics of that song talks about his feelings like that. And the whole scene is I knew what I wanted. I wanted Pocahontas meeting John Smith because that score is my favorite. Um, one of my top favorites. Um, and it's when he's about to shoot her at the waterfall but then he slowly lifts his gun up and her hair is just waving slowly like mm. a flag in the wind. And you hear this beautiful like reverence for like a whole minute of just beautiful music while he's trying to understand who this is. And so I, I wanted to bring that into this scene so much because that's my childhood is the Pocahontas music and the whole animation is just brilliant. And the other thing that was Disney influenced was... Um, when I started doing the crucifixion scene, I found some really awesome high quality sample files of Gregorian chant. And I was like, here we are again, starting with the bells of Notre Dame with the opening arch and hearing the bells and the archdeacons and everything singing and the Gregorian influence. And so I put a lot of that Gothic kind of sound into some of the scores because I just love the Hunchback of Notre Dame and it's been a big part of my whole life. So I was like, you've got to put pieces of yourself into the work that you create because it makes it more meaningful too. I love, yeah, the personal <laughs> element that you bring that's like from your own experience. And then too, I love that you hit on, you know, like including Gregorian chant and going back to the root because like all of Western music, everything that, we do in Europe and America and South America all started with a bunch of monks <laughs> singing the scriptures in Latin because mm -hmm. it was the way they could remember it, right? Like you got to memorize the whole Bible in Latin. How are you going to do that? You sing it Gregorian chant. With right. The and so, <laughs> yeah. And it's like music, you know, Western music started to evolve in like 1100 AD because these monks were singing. 
And then it was like, well, how do we remember all the music? Well, maybe we could start to write some of it down. And they, you know, over hundreds of years, like it developed. And then it was like, well, wouldn't it be cool if we had some kind of brass instrument to support, you know, or what if we could have a violin that would, and it was just like all these, you know, the organ got created, the violin got created, brass instruments got created, string instruments got created to praise Jesus. Yeah. Like and to help us remember the scriptures, right? That's like where it all started in our culture. So I love that you've hit on that, like Gregorian chant piece. That's like the root of all of it, like started here, you know, long before there was Bach, long before there was any kind of praise band, like it all started with Gregorian chant and what a beautiful, you know, way to work it in, in the crucifixion piece. Yeah, I'm glad you brought all that up because I never thought of it as I'm continuing how it began and in the similar way of the intention or the attitude and um, something that I thought was like really cool is that maybe I didn't really latch on to composers that were just writing music based off of no visual aid, but I think the composer that really struck a chord with me was Tchaikovsky because he mm. was doing a ballet and it's all storyline based like the Nutcracker or Sleeping right. Beauty Swan Lake. So those kind of things really fascinated me because he's using imagery and music at the same time. And it's not just music. And then people have to guess what the song's about. Right. So <laughs> I was trying to explain to my son the other day that like long before we had television, there was opera and there was ballet and like that was the primary form of entertainment right and whether it was like the 16 hour ring cycle from Wagner you know or like so many of the Russian operas like there is this high point of culture in the 1860s for me at least because I love romantic music so much and romantic period music mm -hmm. and you know all the Chopin and Liszt and you know it's such florid yeah evokes so much imagery to tell these stories which you know and i think beethoven you know single-handedly pivoted us from a classical era to a romantic area era as uh -huh. he told stories with music yeah so i love that you're you know drawing on that theme also um love hearing about the influences love the heart that you've put into this it's such a meaningful subject matter um it was interesting listening to dallas jenkins talk about his experience producing the chosen and some of his artistic choices and you know <laughs> a lot of fans and then a lot of people going like that's not the bible i read how dare you you know you're uh, yeah. a lot of strong feelings in both directions i was curious for you as an artist you know, painting such a significant topic. You know, what's that been like for you to consider? <laughs> Why do I do what I do in the way that I do it? Well, I've done things in a different direction for so long. It's refreshing and it pushed me to want to do something like this finally, because I remember putting this idea on the back burner saying, no, oh, my biggest passion is writing these albums that are based off of me singing about my life and my story and my, you know, hardship or whatever I was going through. Sure. And, and then when you do that long enough, then it pushes you to want to do something that's more meaningful, more fulfilling and more um, above yourself and getting outside of yourself more. And you see how happy people are also when they're doing this stuff too, like Dallas Jenkins and Roma Downey and, D different people like this you and Kenneth Cope and you see how there's a, a difference because of their focus and their viewpoint and people who just focus on just I guess the suffering the suffering just gets stronger because what you focus on grows so it's kind of like I want to focus on the person that is already been there and uh, I can give it to him and then we can get out of the suffering and we can just move on and he can pull me out and it's way better glorifying the creator instead of just 
dwelling on sorrow and negativity. <laughs> That's one thing that really touched me about your orchestral work also is that there's this balance almost like 50 50 i don't know if you did that on purpose or not but it's just like i mean there's some heavy moments judas betrayal there are some heavy moments crucifixion there are some heavy moments what's it like to atone for the sins of the world and for as much suffering as there is like the other half of the album is about the hope of the resurrection and the tomb rolling forth and what it's like to move forward and preach the gospel and um you know, the collaboration that you've done with your sweetheart, like they're so tender and there's so much <laughs> hope and so much energy and so much vibrance because like he lives today. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus is a living God. I love the way you've painted that to where, like you said, like it's not just suffer centric and there are some beautiful works. You know, you talked about Mel Gibson's passion. It's like, and understandably like that needs to have as many hours and all the graphic details as it had. And there's this whole other like and he's resurrected do we get to celebrate that too because what does it mean for us so yeah I I represented both of those well i'm looking forward to the sequel called the resurrection of the christ that's in the mm -hmm. works with jim caviezel and they're right. going to be doing this section of what he did while he was in the spirit world or in hell preaching to the spirits so it's going to be a movie about that. And then I heard there's possibly a third one that focuses more on the last half. So, and the way that they described the movie was it's going to be one of the biggest films in history. So um, we'll see how that goes, but I'm looking forward to it because I knew that after finishing The Passion of the Christ, it wasn't over for me. Like I wanted to see how it finished. Right. So, and I, I want to be respectful, but I feel like a lot of times I've seen a lot of, movies and cinema um I, sh I should say i've seen a lot of movies and paid attention to the soundtrack like there's a movie called risen there's a movie like all about these there's all these different types of movies that i've seen and i noticed that they all have that gritty rough and dramatic um kind of side to it all but then they leave out the glory a lot of times and they just kind of make it common or, you know, just kind of rough. And then they leave you there. There's Jesus <laughs> getting beaten again. Yeah. And then the movie's over. Right. And I got thinking like, I want to take this to the top level of glory as much as I can. Cause I don't hear a lot of that glory, like very often. And so <laughs> I really wanted to like hear the finale. I wanted to hear the glory too. And one of the things that really was a reference for me was back in 1991 or two, there was a film by the church called the Lamb of God. And I think it was like Kurt Bester or someone did the music for it, but the theme was just so glorious that I loved. It was like this hallelujah ending with the sun rising over the hill. And then it ended the movie in that way. And the other movie was the Testaments when the savior comes to visit the Nephites, I remember the tower tabernacle choir had a big part in the soundtrack mm -hmm. and they made the ending so glorious when he comes to Jacob's father and heals his blindness. And so I did think about that a lot when I was working on these scenes and thought, I want to make something that's cinematic in that way or memorable, or it sparks that, um, feeling in someone else like they can say oh i remember this work had this specific special feeling to it mm. and i take something from that and work on it for something like pass it down <laughs> so good so yeah. so good so facebook friends if you have questions for nathan he's super approachable <laughs> not all musicians are super approachable nathan is so like i said reach out to him um it's Nathan R. Bradford. He's, um, we'll get him tagged here, but you're going to want to be Facebook friends with him for sure. Um, you just had kind of a fiasco a couple of weeks ago where your profile got deleted. So it's a new <laughs> profile. It's got something like, like <laughs> friends. It's not a bot. Like the friends are growing slowly. Um, but yes, friend him. <laughs> If you've got questions, love to hear those. Ask those in the comments so we can respond to those. We'd love to hear your experience. Like what are orchestral works that have really moved you? What's been your experience around Easter with your family? 
what's been your experience with Jesus? Um, would love to hear all of that. If you've got questions for Nathan, like I said, please ask. Um, Nathan, as we wrap today, what else do people need to know? What, what else would you love to share? Well, I just want to know that the opposition comes before the release of something good. So, you know, losing my whole Facebook after 16 years was very difficult. And um, also getting sick and losing my voice twice. So I couldn't record everything I wanted to. It's like I had to work on other things while I'm waiting for that stuff later. So just it seemed like maybe a couple of things just kept showing up when it's like, oh, man, like right before it's time to release and all these things show up. And um, yeah, <laughs> but it's like I posted on Facebook that I wasn't going to let that obstacle be something that stops this, that people can still look forward to it coming out. People can still look forward to hearing this album no matter what's trying to stop it. So, <laughs> yes, album comes out on when does it drop? It's um right before Easter, so you can look for it any time between maybe the seventeenth to the twenty third. It could of March that week in this month of March. Yeah, so coming and up soon, and you, this is available on Apple Music. This is available on Spotify, iHeartRadio. Pandora, Deezer, if you're into Deezer, um, pretty much anywhere you can find music, it's going to be there. Um, I guess Amazon Nathan, follow him. So as soon as this album drops, you can listen, you can share it with your family. You can strengthen your faith in Jesus Christ by having a lived experience, um, you know, narrating his life and glory. Anything else, Nathan? Um, I, I'm glad that this is a family-friendly album. Um, maybe there's one track to be just cautious of while listening, just as a heads up, is I noticed that a lot of the portrayals of Gethsemane, um, or the portrayals, not betrayals, the portrayals of Gethsemane are sometimes so um, peaceful that it's hard to take the serious that we hear in church and put it with a picture that looks calm and peaceful and beautiful in a garden. So I did it in a very unique way that no one's ever done before. And I gave it a very slamming hard, very abusive, very like horrific turn. So you hear lots of violence, lots of screaming, lots of like murders and lots of really hard things i was thinking about like 9 11 and wars and like plagues and like sicknesses and just you know all the things that are happening in the world and i wanted to just show how it's all like pushed into this little three hour space of what he had to go through for three hours and just dropped it in that album and Super sometimes nice. it's scripture when he when he goes to the disciples and he says like really calmly like could you not watch for an hour and they're not even noticing that like anything's different than when he first went over there and he did it three times. And so I just got thinking, I really wanted to make an impact with how, how grateful we are for a savior that went through the fire for us pretty much like went through the, the worst of everything. And, and so I wanted this track to kind of pull at your heart very, really deeply and that's the only way I knew how to make it happen. So I was just going to say, if parents don't want their kids to hear those, that track, that's good to know. Yeah, listen to it first. See, <laughs> you know, examine your own emotions with it. This this what's, was beautiful for me listening to this was that it was, yeah, very emotive. Um, painted some darkness and then also painted light that was, you know, 10 times more than the darkness. And that's that's been my experience of Jesus. So Super excited for this to release. Watch for the album to drop. Um, between March 17, 24, get you ready for Easter. If you got questions for Nathan, please ask, friend him, follow him. So you've got access to this exactly when it drops. And thanks for who you be, Nathan. Thanks. Thank for, you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Bring in, you know, we could talk about Jesus all day. That's <laughs> <laughs> huge mm -hmm. fan. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you, man. Sending lots of love and keep us posted. Facebook land, how we can serve you, how we can strengthen your family. And have an amazing, what's today? Tuesday.
Have an amazing Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, <laughs>